We'll start recording now. You're good, Doug. Thank you very much, Kim. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the July 28th meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us the opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings at this time. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting, which follows the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting that follows the public hearing, but you need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits such as zoning, inland wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before beginning construction. With this, I will ask our clerk, pro tempore perhaps, uh, Commissioner... Uh, uh, Lyons. Is Mr. Lyons doing it? Great. Sure. Uh, Commissioner Lyons, I didn't know if Jen was gonna handle it. Oh, Commissioner Lyons, oh, if you could, if, no, if Commissioner, no, that's okay. If Commissioner Lyons can read the legal notice, that would be great. Last chance, Jen. She's not here. That's right. I didn't okay. think so. So, all right. Legal <laughs> notice, Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, July 28th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following application seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 5032-20, Chris and Kelly Greaves, seeking to remove existing deck and replace with 16 by 12 pressure treated wood deck with black aluminum square spindles and wood posts at 23 Wilcox Street. Application 5033-20, Chris and Kelly Greaves, seeking to remove existing chain link fence and replace with a five foot high spruce fence at 23 Wilcox Street. Application 5034-20, I hope I say it right this time on third try, Chris and Kelly Reeves seeking to reface existing concrete front steps with cobblestone veneer, bluestone treads, install black aluminum handrails at 23 Wilcox Street. Application 5035-20, Ruth Ann F. Calabrese seeking to install a four foot high split rail wood fence in rear yard at 87 Main Street. Application 5036-20, Sandra Stavola seeking to install 12 by 14 Clotter Farms Signature Cottage Shed in Rear Yard at 157 Broad Street. Do I read the rest, Kim, or? If you can, please. If you wish to review the application on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any residents interested in speaking on the application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Weathersfield, Connecticut, it's 13th day of July, 2020. Thank you very much, Commissioner Lyons. Appreciate that. So why don't we start? Doug, you went to mute. I'm off mute now. Yes. Thank you. So let's start with attendance. Uh, it looks like we have 
uh, several uh, regular members and also uh, alternate available. And I think that our numbers will not exceed five, so perhaps everyone will be voting. Uh, we have uh, Ovian, uh, Lyons, Mead, and Miglis. Do we have any other members here that I have missed? If not, then I believe all of us uh, will be voting. So thank you very much for joining us this evening, folks, in this virtual uh, meeting, which uh, I will do my best to move right along with, beginning with application number 5032-20. Chris and Kelly Greaves, the first of three applications, and this is, all of them have to do with the property at 23 Wilcox Street. Uh, do we have the Greaves or a contractor available? Chris, you just have to unmute. Okay. Perfect. Welcome, folks. Thank you. So, is there anything that you'd like to tell us about this first application? And that application is for specifically the uh, deck uh, and the um, replacement uh, effort of that deck at 23 Wilcox Street. Um, all we're looking to do, it's in poor shape and we're just kind of looking to, to take it down and just make it a little bit bigger. So no the measurements, I believe the measurements you have are a little bit off. It's actually only like 10 by 12 with a small area because there's two doors on the back of the house. One small area is gonna allow access to the second door. So the difference between the documents we have and the um, measurement that you're giving now, is that smaller or larger than- I believe the drawing, I believe the drawing I'd sent in shows it as 10 by 12. And um, you're saying 10 by 10? No, it's 10 by 12, but there's like a small area that jets out that's about four foot by six foot. So that's the only, I believe they have it listed as 16 or 12 by 24, maybe. So I'm looking at the drawing. Yep. And it's 12 feet from the house towards the back. Yep. It's 16 feet wide. And then there's a small part on the side that's four by six. So and I must have wrote it wrong. It's actually 10 by 12 with the four by six piece on the side. Okay, so it, it doesn't span the width of the house. No, it doesn't. The one currently does, we're actually gonna shrink it down on the back of the house. Okay. Basically enough to put a table and chairs up there. Okay. So I must have just miswrote that. And the little bump on the side, is that actually four by six? Yep. So it's 10 feet off the house, 12 feet at the largest width, and then that bump out. A little small bump out. And that's only an access to a door that goes through like a breezeway. Yep. Okay, so right now the drawings that we have mm -hmm. shows 16 feet wide and 12 feet out. Does everyone have that same yep. drawing? At, and it has the four by six section and you're saying the four by six section is accurate but the 12 by 16 section should be 10 feet 10 by 12 yeah i think i marked it wrong when i sent the drawing in and the part that's the the along the house there that's the 12 feet and 10 feet out or the uh, reverse i believe it's 12 wide 10 out yeah okay yes and then so it's 12 wide plus the other six wide six, uh, which along puts the house. it at about 18 total but just okay. the one that one generalized area will be 10 by 12. sure and that overall width is still narrower than the full width of the back of the house yes thank you are there any other questions of the commissioners for this application i interrupted you Basic. you can go first if there's more Oh yes, I'm curious. Is there going to be any skirting on the side of the deck? Is it going um, to be if we do anything, it's probably going to be on the driveway side, just some square lattice. Probably a red cedar square lattice. About how much clearance do you think you'll have underneath there? <laughs> Three feet. 
at the, the highest end. When you get to about the house, it's probably about 30 inches. Of course, the narrower it is, the har harder it is to get under it to clear anything. Yeah. So right. it's usually a good idea to have it um, even in areas where it's a little less of a, a cosmetic issue. Well, I have a landscaper that's gonna come in and clear underneath where the deck's gonna go and drop stone down. So we won't have that to be a help. part of it. That's great. Bacic, any other questions? I'm all set, thank you. That's wonderful. How about Chris or Claire? No, I'm good, thank you. I'm good, thank you. Sure, hearing none. We'll move to ask at this point, we're gonna break this up uh, um, by each application. So is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application for the deck on Wilcox Street? And hearing none, we will move to application number 5033-20, which is the um, fencing project at 23 Wilcox Street. Is there anything that you folks would like to let us know about that uh, particular project? It's basically going to be a standard stockade fence, five foot tall. We had some new neighbors move in that have a small child. We have chain link fence there now. We do have dogs and we just kind of want to be able to let the dogs go without the kid sticking his hand through the fence and more of a safety issue. Certainly understand. Are there any questions of any commissioners for the applicant regarding the fencing project? The documentation uh, tells the story. Um, so at this point, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against the application involving the fencing or, and I should also say, if there's anything else you wanted to say about the fencing project uh, to the applicants. You don't have to, uh, but we're kind of moving a little quickly here. So hearing none, uh, we'll move to the third of the three applications that you have. And if you give me just one second, I need to get back to that page. And that would be the um, Application for uh, concrete front steps, uh, including veneer. And that would be application number 5034-20. Uh, this is your uh, project on the front of the house. Yes. Is there anything you wanted to let us know about that project in addition to the documentation that you provided us earlier? Basically, they're just horribly ugly precast concrete <laughs> steps and we want to do something with them. The pictures were very attractive. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I drove over there thinking that this was uh, an application after the fact. No, they're, uh, they're pretty bad. In any event, uh, thank you very much uh, for that. And I'm wondering if Vasek, Chris, uh, or Claire have any questions regarding this application? Uh, the railings are as shown in which picture? I don't know which one you have. Okay, there's, with this application, there's three photographs. The first photograph is of the cobblestones. And then there's a picture of the stairs on a shingled, I think, cape or something with uh, black iron railings. And then the bottom picture is a set of stairs with brick sides and I'm not sure. Black what aluminum, it. a black aluminum yeah. handrail. That's, that's the handrail we're going to put that's in. The We'd one. like to put in. Okay. Okay. So you're combining the handrail with the picture with brick with the um, example of stone facing that is in one of the other uh, yeah, pictures. Yeah, there's two pictures. It. One was to show this basically the idea of what we wanted to do for the stairs. The other was to do the railing. I couldn't find a picture with both. Understand. <laughs> Thank you, Vasek, for pointing that out. I just needed to get my head around it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I had the same uh, query. Any other questions from uh, Claire or Chris? Hearing none. Uh, Thank you very much, folks, for coming in tonight for these Thanks. three projects. I'll ask at this point 
if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, I'll move to application number 5035-20, Rufan Calabrese. This is the uh, rail wood fencing project at 87 Hi. Main Street. Welcome. Yes. Hi. Hi there. Um, if you could identify yourself for the record, so, please. So, uh, Chris is going to be putting this fence in for me. Just, <laughs> sure. It's I'm Ruth Ann Calabrese. And um, I'm looking to put in a split rail fence in the rear of my property. Uh, um, really for keeping the dogs in the yard. I have quite the squirrel chase to have the dog get some exercise back there and stay safe. Thank you very much, Ruth Ann. Mm -hmm. And is there um, any additional, anything in addition to the documents you already provided uh, that you want to uh, describe to us? Otherwise, I can move to the questions of the commissioners. The only thing I noticed in the application, I didn't mention the wire mesh that is included in the split rail. It's in the photo, but I didn't um, verbalize it in my description of the project. Thank you for verifying that. Uh, mm -hmm. When you were just describing the reason for the project, uh, it came to mind. So okay. uh, the uh, wire uh, on the inside, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And we have uh, quite a few successful installations of this sort of fence in the district. Um, I assume you've seen some of those at least. I have. I have, yes. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any questions of Claire, Chris, or Vasek? for Ruth? Yeah, that I was wondering about the wire mesh. Thanks for uh, answering that. Now, is that a green color or aluminum silver or what color would that be? Chris, what did you order? <laughs> it, is, it is black. <laughs> it's a black, cool, okay. We've seen all three and I think the black will be fine. Okay. Uh, at least here's for a this little more. Yep, yeah. sure, okay. thank you. And I assume Ruth Ann's going to wait until Chris puts his fence in so he can, she can see what kind of work he can do. <laughs> We've done plenty in Old Weathersfield. You can drive anywhere and look at it. All right. So, um, Claire, or um, I guess that Claire, that just leaves you. Any other questions? Hearing none. Uh, I'll uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening, Ruth, and ask if there's anyone in the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none, we'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is application number 5036-20, Sandy Stavola's shed on uh, at 157 Broad Street. Sandy, welcome back. Are you with us tonight? I don't know if she's here. I have somebody with a phone number, but I don't know who it is. I'm going to try to unmute They just them. unmuted themselves. I unmuted them, but oh. I don't know who it is. All right. Is Sandy Stavola or a contractor here for the Broad Street project? She may have thought that we wouldn't get to her until a little later, but we do have documentation for this uh, shed. And uh, just to go over that with you briefly, Kim, uh, I believe it's situated in the left rear corner of the property uh, with the uh, short side facing the street and the long side um, facing uh, Anderson Farms. That is how she presented it. And the uh, stature of the shed seemed to me to be uh, fairly uh, small and not that imposing and in keeping with uh, a relatively small house so that uh, the shed doesn't overpower the house. Right, and she does have um, black, it looks like they're indicating um, black shutters and black sh shingles um, and an almond siding with white trim. Um, and the picture does show barn doors with the X's on them. So I don't know if she's assuming that that's how she wants. 
I assume that's how it comes. So I, she's not here to ask. So. I understand. Is the, um, and I have to go back to the documentation. Was the siding called out uh, as it to was. whether it's oh. T111? I in, the, in the photograph, it's definitely when T111. I was, when she went, she when she and I were talking about it, it did sound like that she was going to go with a T111 rather than a solid wood. Oh, it does say signature T111 cottage with cottage. double door and optional window upgrade. So the window does say optional. Okay. Well, the photograph it it sounds like she's presenting the sample uh, with the photograph as being the likely. Uh, installation here. If you're uh, it, well, you can table it. Kim, it looks like, uh, yeah, you're right. That's the base model. It looks like she's selecting light gray on the right hand column. Is that that's select good. siding color? Because it that's photo good. shows it in almond, trim white, shutter, but it looks like on the right I side, don't, we don't think so. Because it's cut off. Oh, yes. No, I don't, I don't know if that's how it shows up when she prints it online. And okay. then you go and select. I just don't know. Yeah. I, I don't want to what, assume. I see what Chris is making reference to here. Um, that matches the, the house. Yeah, I think that right. I feel more comfortable. I, I mean, the first issue is normally T111 is a paintable material. Uh, but it's if it's coming painted to begin with, I'm certainly interested in the color. And I do think that the um, one of the things that we could do tonight is we could proceed on the basis of our interpretation of this documentation as describing exactly what she wants to install. And so this commissioner um, would certainly be willing to consider that as a stipulation uh, when we get to the public meeting. Uh, and certainly um, we can also uh, proceed in such a way that would allow her to come back to us for a modification if for some reason this is not her wish. Um, these markings that look like uh, options that she has selected. In any case, uh, are there any comments of uh, any of the other commissioners, Claire, Chris, uh, or Vasek regarding this shed? Doug, I, it's Kim. I would just, I would say I'll, I'm putting a a, cir a square around her, the things that say that they were selected. Um, if you want to go with the light gray, the white trim, the black shutter, the charcoal gray arch uh, architectural shingle, um, a four foot ramp. Um, it does say a storage loft, no cupola, no weather vane, no window boxes, and no window upgrade. So it looks like it'll be standard but with the things that are selected if you that's to great i'm them. glad you have that uh image available to you the same as we do obviously it came from you um and we can discuss that at the uh, public meeting but i think that uh might allow us to be able to go forward today um so I will ask if there's any member of the public that wishes to speak for or against this application, unless any of the other three members haven't had a chance to chime in yet. And hearing none, I uh, will invite us to address an additional application to our agenda tonight. If I could have just a moment. Uh, public comment, Doug? Uh, I think I um, asked for it, and I I should say, hearing none, um, I'll go forward, although I'll ask again. Uh, is there any public comment related to the shed on Broad Street? Hearing none. Thank you, Vasek, just in case I hadn't. Uh, at this point, I uh, am going to turn to application number. Wait, Doug, can I yes? interrupt you? I'm so sorry. Sandra Stable is is just Try is just logging in. Oh, that's great. If you want to before we out. close the public hearing, then uh, why don't we say hello to Sandra if she's with us? And Sandra, if you are, could you just identify yourself for the record along with your home address? I am. She's muted. 
I'm trying to unmute her. Oh, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Sandra, un unmute yourself. Yeah. There. there we go. Good evening, Sandra Wall, 157 Broad Street, Wethersfield. That's great, Sandra. We ended up moving along really quickly here tonight, and we have just discussed your um, project. Um, we had moved to public comment about it, but we haven't officially moved beyond it yet. Uh, what we can tell you is that we noted the options that you had selected or not selected, uh, and uh, we were planning to proceed to consider an approval based on those options, which included things like white trim, uh, gray siding, black shutters, uh, the things that were noted um, on the application, uh, the material sub, uh, yep, submitted yep. with the application. Does that sound uh, uh, accurate to you? It is. That's great. Yep. Uh, so we'll discuss a little bit more about this during the public meeting. Uh, but I think that we uh, were able to use your good documentation uh, to move this along. Uh, I should have also indicated uh, you should just give your uh, name and home address for the record. Thank you. Yeah, I did when we started, but it's oh. Sandra Spala, 157 Broad Street. Thank you so much. Sorry yep. if I didn't okay. catch that part. So at this point, uh, I did ask if there was any public comment about the shed on Broad Street. I don't believe anyone responded. And so I will move at this point to application number 5041-20. That's Mike and Marissa Pareto seeking an amendment to the application number 4962-19 to change the garage roof at 120 Hartford Avenue. And I saw that we have Gary Vivian with us. Gary, if you could give your uh, name and business address for us, please. Sure. Gary Vivian at 12 Avalon, uh, I'm sorry, 43 Old Pewter Lane in Weathersfield. <laughs> Ooh, blast from the past. There you go. And it looks like we also have the homeowner here, although he's on mute. Uh, he just unmuted himself, and so if you'd like to identify yourself officially, Michael, along with your home address, that would be great. Yep, Michael Pareto, uh, 120 Hartford Avenue. Welcome back, and thank you for working with our um, Historic District Coordinator, Kim, uh, and the rest of the town staff on uh, your project, uh, which we understand there are a few changes that you're seeking and um, they were outlined for us in the paperwork that we received. I don't know if Gary, you wanna briefly uh, go over those uh, for the record, uh, but sure, the sure. documentation was very good. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I included the four elevations. Uh, I don't know if you have the uh, previous ones that were approved. Um, it, uh, there was a couple minor issues that I just added to it. It wasn't a change, but they weren't really addressed in the initial meeting. Uh, the top of the roof elevation wasn't called out and we're increasing it by about two feet. I did call out uh, what that is, the 24-8 on the southwest elevation, just for the record. Um, and it, like I said, it was an increase by two feet, but we didn't really call it out on the approved documents. Um, and with that said, on the first, on the southwest elevation, the um, change on that would be, um, we're proposing to change the standing seam metal roof to a uh, three tab asphalt shingle roof, uh, the same material, the same color as we got approved for the addition uh, right adjacent to it that you can see on the elevation there. Thank you. Noted that. So from the front, is it fair to say that the uh, building um, is going to look the same from the exit of Hanmer School, Francis Street, uh, as it would have before, but for the standing seam roof and the slightly higher height, although we hadn't specified it earlier? 
Yeah, I don't think the height, it's still uh, appropriate to the scale of the house. So I don't think that's any, really any change. It's really the material of the roof that would be the biggest change from the Hamner exit there. And again, to match the, uh, the house there, I just thought it was a little more contextual with the, with the house. And it's a one and a half story building essentially versus the two and a half stories of the house, main house itself. Is that Correct. fair to say? That's correct. And what, what kind of started this whole conversation is the homeowners, uh, and Mike can uh, address that probably a little better than I can, but the homeowners decided that it was a great space once the foundation was poured and they got a sense of what the square footage would look like. Um, they just decided that one of the comments from the commission members on the earlier meeting about having a, a space up there, whether it be for a yoga studio or a playroom for the kids, it was a, an inexpensive way to capture that square footage by just increasing it a little bit higher and adding in the, the dormer in the rear. And with that said, then it makes sense to add a few more windows to bring in some light and make that space a, a little more usable. So since you're on the dormer, uh, could you go from the front of the building to the back and address that elevation in terms of the width of the dormer and whether it actually reaches the uh, side walls of the building or not? Um, no, we're holding it in from the side walls to give it uh, that cleaner kind of dormer look to it, the, the element there, instead of making it look like the, the siding just continues up. Um, you can see it on the uh, northeast elevation and I really don't, I think you might be able to catch a corner of it from the clearing as you're leaving Hamner and looking back. Uh, otherwise, you really won't see it. Um, as you might have noticed driving by now with the clearing of the site, it's a lot more visible than it was before. But I, I don't think you'll be able to see really any of the dormer there. But that, that's the way that we could capture it without raising the whole element a little higher. Certainly the um, space available in the backyard has been evident. We've been seeing the owner uh, and um, contractors working on the property and to see it kind of reveal over time <laughs> makes it unsurprising that they uh, ended up finding such value with using this accessory building as something more than just a garage. And it does seem to be a, a relatively sympathetic expansion of uh, the existing uh, footprint, uh, I mean, without an expansion of the footprint, uh, you've been able to create uh, something that will have more value. Um, and I think that because it's as deep in the lot as it is, um, the sight line is going to be relatively minimal uh, in terms of the dormer impact on the district. Could you please address um, the sidewalls and the changes that uh, were talked about there, if any. I think that there was a mention of a door, I mean, a window for where a door was and that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, in, in case someone's looking at the book that was approved, we'll go to the Northwest elevation first. Uh, and that's the one that it, nothing has changed other than the, uh, the addition of the dormer and the simplification of the, of the roof line in the rear. We don't have that little saddle in the back there anymore. Uh, and we're just proposing to add one additional six over six double hung window at the top there, right below the uh, cupola there, uh, the same size that's on the existing house that you can see on the same elevation. And is that the side that faces the house or the side wall that faces the neighbor? It's away. That's away from the house. Thank away, you. Yeah, away from the house. Neighbor. And then finally, uh, is that's the only change on the uh, side that faces the traffic coming from the north on Hartford Avenue. Is Correct. there, uh, are there any changes on the side that faces the house? The southeast elevation, yes. That one, um, we had a rather large curved top window on the second floor area on that one. And the, uh, um, the utility door in the rear, the double doors, and then the single man door in the front with a slight overhang with it, 
And uh, what the homeowners um, figured out when they were standing on the side is they had that kind of door on their existing garage and they never used it. So they'd rather replace the three foot wide door with a window the same size that's on the adjacent uh, existing uh, house, six, uh, six over six, double hung and take off. There's no need to have that little overhang because it's not a, a walkway. And then uh, to match the uh, opposite elevation, the Northwest um, on the second floor, we're gonna have a six over uh, six um, um, double hung window on the second floor also. And then you can also see the side of the dormer. So that's the change there. But this now is this, looking straight on, and this is this is where, with the angle on uh, Hartford Avenue, I don't know how much you won't see as much as what I've drawn, but I've shown everything that's that's going to be constructed. Thank you, because uh, that is certainly a view that's uh, going to be so tight it wouldn't be perceived unless you were literally standing on the corner of Francis Street and uh, Hartford Avenue, and we're looking at the side, but. There are changes to all uh, four sides of the building, uh, but they are uh, uh, relatively minor in their impact on the district, I think, because of the depth of the building. At this point, what I would like to ask uh, the, I'd like to ask the other three commissioners, if they have any questions about the project itself, um, because the whole notion of uh, acting um, on this request tonight is something that we can discuss during the public meeting. But while we have the homeowner and the architect with us, if there are any questions in the public hearing, we'd certainly want to take advantage of their presence. So uh, Claire, uh, Chris, or Vasek? Yes, very much so. Um, Gary, you talked about lifting the ridge line by two feet. Yep. However, you didn't address, is the roof pitch changing? or is the whole roof going up by two feet? Uh, no, it changed the pitch a little bit. It's eight and a half, 12, eight and a half and 12 now. And I think what it was before, um, I don't think we addressed it. We got, we got kind of sidetracked on this project where the location of the garage and we missed mm -hmm. a couple of things. Um, one thing that I, I'm not sure if we need to address it, but the description on the certificate of appropriateness describes the garage as being attached. <laughs> and that was, the, that was the original proposal. Right, but that, that verbiage shouldn't be on the certificate yeah. of appropriate, I wouldn't think. But, that's the way we, that it has to be written because that's the way it's written in the legal notice. Oh, I see. So okay. the, the amendments are the things that change. Gotcha. I think the way that it's written has to be the way that it's in the oh, legal okay. notice. Oh, well, good. That's good. So thank you, Kim, for offering that explanation for us. So I, I believe it was uh, seven and a half um, in 12 on the pitch before. So it changed it by one. What's the depth of the building? Do you uh, 32 that? feet, I think. How much? I think it's 32. 32, okay. Keep me honest, Gary. Yep, that's, that's what we submitted, 32 feet. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Vasek. Do you have any other questions? No, I think that, I mean, you know, Gary, Gary does good drawing, so that answers most of it. Thank uh, you. Thank you. And I, I, I would like to bring up that the homeowner has been doing a lot of site work. And the cool thing is, is they're finding some wonderful wood on site and they're actually milling it and using it on the project. So uh, very uh, reminiscent of working with Doug Buck on the barn, so. That's wonderful. Yep. Great to hear. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, both Michael and Gary. Are there any additional questions from Claire or Chris? Hearing none, at this point, I'll entertain. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us tonight and everyone else. We'll thank be you. moving thank to the public meeting in just a moment. Uh, so if we haven't already held you long enough, uh, you're welcome to stay. Otherwise, you can follow up with Kim tomorrow morning. And so at this point, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting on all the aforementioned items. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you.
Thank you, Chris, for the motion and Claire for the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the public hearing is closed and the public meeting is open. So uh, let us uh, start with deck project at 23 Wilcox Street. And make that is... I'll make a motion to approve with a stipulation that the deck shall be 10 feet deep by 12 foot wide with a four by six addition on the side. Um, and that the driveway side, beneath the, beneath the deck on the driveway side, there shall be installed cedar, cedar square lattice with a picture frame frame. I'll second, second that. There. <laughs> um, so the steps were accepted by the um, movement, uh, Chris, and uh, by Claire the second or vice versa? Claire second. Thank you. Uh, I have a quick question, uh, which is Vasek, uh, is there a reason why you didn't uh, stip the lattice on the uh, west side as well, the non-driveway side? Yeah, but nothing I can articulate. Okay, well. Uh, I mean, I'd be open to uh, urging the homeowner and either through stipulation or just by uh, common sense to put it there. Uh, well, I think that the driveway side, uh, it, the, it looks like it would be, this deck, the skirting of the deck would seem to be as visible on one side as the other. Um, although the sight line is narrower on the other side, I agree. And you're getting close to a dead end that keep a lot in, of people won't see, but. Keep in mind, um, Doug, also, uh, unlike the drawing that was submitted, this deck is only 12 feet wide rather than 16. I, I think it's 18. Sorry. It's okay. I think it's at the bottom. Sorry Actually, about that. Not a problem. I think it's a total of 18 feet wide, uh, Vasek. No, it was 16 feet. feet coming out of the house, Doug, initially, it looked like. It was 16 the, plus 6. Right. So I now, think it's 12 plus 6. Or tw 12 out of 10. Plus. Yeah, but it, it's a smaller footprint. Basically, it's four foot narrower. Yes. Okay. Than what was submitted. All right. Uh, yes, I mean, just to be clear, I think alongside the house, the main portion is 12 wide and the smaller portion is six wide. Yeah. And I believe that the extension away from the house is 10 feet yep. uh, in the area where it's 12 wide and yep. is four feet in the area where it's six mm -hmm. wide. So we have all those numbers now available for the steps uh, because, or, or we could say that's as part of the presented since we were able to make some corrections. Normally, this is something during the meeting that we would do with a signature, but uh, if Kim has uh, been able to record that information here, I think we can document it su sufficiently that way. Is that all right, Kim? I have deck shall be 12 feet wide by 10 feet deep with a six foot wide and four foot deep bump out. Driveway side shall have cedar square lattice with picture for cedar. Red Cedar Square skirting lattice with picture frame molding. Yep. And I think I, the only thing I would suggest is that that uh, lattice be on either facing either neighbor, uh, only because I'm theoretically open. I think it might be visible from the public way, although it's a little narrower. But that's the only other thing I would offer to this. Is there any uh, enthusiasm for that, or are we going to just rest with what? we have, which is the uh, the lattice on one side. I mean, like I said, I would go either way. Thank uh, you. I'm just wondering how Chris or uh, Claire feel. It's about 30 inches off the ground. You know, I would suspect if he's going to lattice out that, I'm okay not having to stip it, stip it but I could go either way as well. I, I would think that he would. 
And it's going to be Go stone ahead. underneath, 30 inches, um, not much height there. Thank you. Uh, Chris, how about Claire? Do you have a feeling either way about a uh, lattice on either side, on both sides versus stepping it on just one? She's on mute. I don't know if she'll. No, she's not. No, oh, she... there she goes. Thank you, Claire. I think you're back. No. She went to the bathroom. She might be having difficulties. <laughs> sure. Understand. Well, uh, let's say that since uh, both Chris and Vatsik say they could live with it on both sides, uh, and I, I'm assuming that the homeowner could as well, um, that um, well, uh, I would, I would prefer to see. Oh, the problem is we don't have our second right here. Claire, are you back you so that you can vote? Yes, I am. Oh, perfect. And how do you feel about lattice on both sides or just one? Either way is fine. It's not a big okay. issue. Thank you. All right. So at this point, I'll just ask that the stipulation include lattice on both sides. And if Chris can um, uh, add that, uh, accept that step and Claire can second it, then we can call a vote. Second. Thank you. Chris, I'll second. I think it was Vasek's motion. I, I was, can accept that's that. That's okay. Yeah. Doug can Sorry about that. Well. No worries. No worries. Sorry yeah. That. Thank you, Vasek. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the deck is approved on Wilcox Street. Thank you. Moving to the uh, fence replacement at 23 Wilcox Street. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as submitted with the following stipulation that the horizontal rails should be facing into the applicant's property. Thank you. Basically good side out to the neighbor. Yeah, I, I didn't know if that was a technical term. <laughs> That's both, both, both of you explained it well. Thank you. And is there a second? Sure. Thank you, Vasek. Uh, so uh, I think that we don't have to have a lot of discussion about this, but I can offer that it appears to be an effort to try to provide some privacy to the neighbor. And it's a fence that is very common in the district. Uh, and the installation stipped uh, will uh, have the installation be as we normally see it as well. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the um, application uh, is approved with stipulation. Moving to application number 5034-20. This is the last of the Greaves applications at 23 Wilcox Street. This is for the front steps. I'll uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve as submitted. So moved. Thank second. you so much, Claire. And second to Chris. Uh, again, we had some discussion about this before, the uh, railing uh, selected uh, and the, um, uh, the steps that are desired are both uh, common in the district right now uh, and also uh, work on a number of different properties, both old and new, because they have their predicates, uh, certainly wrought iron, uh, before aluminum and uh, some of these steps uh, uh, and their facing uh, when we had real stone. So uh, at this point, I'll ask uh, to call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application number 5035-20. This is Ruth Ann's project the uh, fencing uh, with the wire installed uh, at 87 Main Street. Is there a motion? I'll move to approve as stipulated, I mean, as submitted. Second. Thank you. Uh, Kim and Chris as the second. I mean, and I should say Claire and Chris as the second. And uh, as submitted includes the articulation made here uh, for the stip, uh, pardon me, ar the articulation made that there was going to be wire on the inside of this fence and it would be black. Chris, are we, I'm sorry, Kim, are we all set uh, in terms of the um, exact uh, language of this? Yes. Thank you. Uh, this is a common uh, way to uh, 
secure a backyard uh, in Weathersfield in a very inviting way, I might add as well. So I think it's one uh, worth supporting. And I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Uh, application number 5036-20, Sandra Stavola's project at 157 Broad Street, the shed that uh, was the subject of quite a bit of discussion already. Um, at this point, I feel comfortable um, with a motion to uh, approve as submitted I'd be happy to make that motion myself and invite a second. Second. Thank you very much, Chris. Is there any discussion since I kind of jumped the gun there? The only thing I have to put on is I'm somewhat disappointed in the shed in that it's pretty much a lowest common denominator. Uh, it's a really neat house in a very prominent position. Granted, most of the shed will be shielded by the fence that has been approved but I'm just, she could have done so much better. That's interesting, Vasek, because my guess is that she was trying to pick something in stature that was relatively uh, small uh, and wouldn't overwhelm the house. And I realize it's a pre-built um, kind of shed um, and it's sitting right next to a very important farm. Uh, and so I, I would share your concern if I knew what the alternative would have been that you would have suggested. Are you suggesting something that would have been um, hand-built and, and less ornamental? Overhangs, picture the roof. I mean, so many things could be done to come up with a better shed. And there are many pre-built sheds out there. Granted, they cost more money, but you know, you do get what you pay for. But I just, you asked what I thought and you got it. No, I, I understand. And I'm interested because, you know, the house itself has a cottagey feel to it. And this shed itself has a, a somewhat cottagey feel to it. Um, I agree that there are other things that could be there, um, but it is a kind of an anomaly where you have a cottage on a, a property that's adjacent to a farm. And that's not, I call it an anomaly, but it's not unusual. I mean, as uh, farms have built out, uh, sometimes the owners or the extended family end up building nearby and so you don't always get something that's necessarily part of the compound that was there before, but you're right. This is a place where we could have encouraged an alternative. Um, I'd uh, be curious to see what Claire or, or Chris have to say about some of where you might have be going here, because certainly over the life of the property, taking another two weeks to think about this further, might not be without its uh, merit if other commissioners see it that way. You know, this is what the applicants come in with. It doesn't preclude her from coming back in a couple of years with something different. Um, we certainly have approved sheds like this lots of places. Um, I think, frankly, because it's next to a farm, it, it lends itself to a heavy, to more to a utilitarian look than a decorative look. Thank you, Claire. How about you, Chris? Again, it is to what Claire mentioned is what the applicant brought to us. That's what we're voting on. Yeah, would I like to have seen Vasek had some good points on some, you know, I don't want to see a cupola. I think the sight lines are very minimal here. It is a storage shed. Uh, the, the narrow side is facing us. Um, I don't believe you're really going to see, not a big fan of those crossed X's barn doors, uh, but you won't really see those. I think it's an appropriate shed for the area and the usage. And the material certainly T111, regardless of the overhangs or any, a window on that side would have been the same probably. So I'm okay with it. Well, thank you very much. I do appreciate the input, especially Vasek's and uh, those of uh, Claire and Chris. 
I do think that the view from the public way is relatively minimal. It's interesting that Anderson Farms uh, posted a photograph of uh, Sandy's beautiful backyard uh, just the other day. But those kinds of, that kind of view is really not within our purview. And even if it were, as I said before, um, the, if this is the um, shed that she ends up continuing with going forward, uh, it, it won't be completely inappropriate for a cottagey house. Um, it may not stand the same test of time as uh, something else. Uh, and certainly um, the homeowner is welcome to uh, not proceed with this approval uh, if she ends up having second thoughts about it. Um, so I made a motion to approve as uh, was submitted and it was seconded, I think, by Chris. Uh, or right. I think that, so given that, uh, given all that, I will call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? One nay. Thank you, Vasek, for uh, taking the time to note that uh, in both your vote and the good comments you made earlier. Uh, so the motion carries and the uh, application is approved as submitted. Um, thank you very much to all the uh, applicants tonight. We have uh, uh, we can move to the other part of the agenda. No, we can't. <laughs> one more. One more. The the amendment, Doug. The oh, garage. I'm sorry about that. Hartford Ave. Sorry, yep. I was looking at the old agenda. Sorry about that. Okay. So let me go back to application number. Make sure, make sure I get this number right. Fifty forty one dash twenty. That's uh, the amendments uh, or modification of the approval for forty nine sixty two dash nineteen. In some ways, an, uh, an articulation, since some of it wasn't articulated earlier. The uh, project at 120 Hartford Avenue. Uh, I uh, first would uh, ask that we frame our discussions in the form of a motion. Uh, so I will make a motion to approve as submitted and looking for a second. And then anyone that has uh, difficulty with uh, proceeding. Uh, tonight on this modification, substantial as it is, uh, we can discuss that. I'll second I'll the motion. Thank you. Uh, I think we got a second from Chris, just barely. No, Vasek did. No, I, uh, okay. I, was, I was about Great. nodding my head. <laughs> then we'll call, the, uh, we'll call the second to Vasek. So discussion-wise, uh, I, I will say that for my sake, it's certainly uh, not insubstantial modifications. But I think they are, when, when taken collectively, but uh, when viewed from any part of the public way, they are minimal enough that I think they could be addressed as modifications tonight without further public notice. Are there any members of the commission that have uh, a problem with that? No. Thank nope. you very much, Claire. Uh, and I assume uh, Chris and Vasek, you're all right with that as well? Yep. Yeah, I think um, I think what you're struggling with, Doug, is you're viewing this as a major modification, and I'm looking at it very differently. From the public way, all they're doing is putting in two small windows in the ridge, or near the ridge, raising the roof line to a pitch that is more appropriate with the existing building, and they're putting a dormer off the back, which is not particularly visible from most of the view. So it's not a lot of change. Uh, the biggest change that is being proposed is the change of roofing material from the standing seam to the architectural shingles. However, there is a large chunk of roof immediately next to it for the addition that has a matching roof on it. And one of the things is, I mean, this building, despite Gary's best efforts, is going to read as a new building. Uh, primarily because there's two large garage doors facing the streets. Uh, so it's a new building and the shingles that are being proposed at this point are entirely appropriate, both for the district and for a brand new building, even in such close proximity uh, as to the Francis house. 
Um, thank you. And, thank you, Vlasic. Go and, ahead. And what, furthermore, what it does is it addresses the Secretary of Interior standards in that the, any new construction that goes on is easily discernible as new construction versus a continuation of existing. Absolutely. Um, I, I agree I, completely, Vasek. Thank you very much, Claire, as well. I just wanted to make sure that in my enthusiasm for this modification, uh, I didn't overlook the uh, notice issues, but I agree with you. That's uh, part of the reason I said that collectively, uh, it may not be an insubstantial modification, but each of these elements from any one view is very insubstantial uh, impact on, from the public way. And I also uh, would say that I welcomed the change in roofing material because I do think that without standing seam, the, um, the newness of the garage will be diminished slightly because it will be fading into a more commonly used roofing material. So it's not going to uh, pull your attention away from the historic property that should still be the center of attention at uh, this address on Hartford Avenue. So I thank you all for allowing that part of the record to be made uh, that allows us to move forward today. So unless there's any further comment, uh, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the modifications are approved as submitted. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, you I had jumped the gun here. before. No, but we'll go back to the uh, agenda, sorry. And that brings us to approval of minutes for July 14th. All four of you are here. Thank you very much, Linda. As usual, we thank our reporter for uh, making the record or, uh, that is so valuable for others to use in the future. And uh, I take this opportunity to also thank our historic district coordinator at this time. We could not do the work that we do here on this commission without these two partners, these wonderful town employees. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 And there weren't any corrections to the minutes, I'm assuming. And so uh, uh, the, mo the minutes are approved. Thank you. Um, at this point, Public comments on general matters of the historic district. Kim, do we have anyone that signed up for that? No. And do you have any uh, report this evening? I do not. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, is there any correspondence? None. Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Second. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Claire. Thank you, everyone. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. I'm especially grateful to my three colleague commissioners for making tonight's meeting a success and all the participants. Good night. Take Good night. care. Thank, Thank you. you. Everybody travel safe. Thanks, guys. I have to figure out how to do this. <laughs> I have to stop recording. Okay. Thank you, Kim.